too funny. Do you think I uh, need to, to trim back or start harvesting some more of my herbs? <laughs> We're not going to be able to get out of the house soon. <laughs> Hi everyone, I got a couple requests to show how we dig in our flagstones. There's two ways you can do a flagstone path. If you're doing a true path, this is more of a design element, kind of stepping stones than it is a path. But you can either take out the entire expanse of sod in a row, basically wherever you want your path, and then put the flagstones in and then add back in either seed or some topsoil seed and reseed around them. Uh, we we don't usually take out everything. Uh, the only time we take out everything is if we're doing a pea gravel garden or something like that. So this is pretty much how we all, almost always do our flagstone, whether it's a path or whether it's stepping stones or whatever we're going for. Most of them will not have to be dug in. Um, after them sitting here for seven to 10 days, they're already like this one, this one does not need to be dug in. The mower will already go over it. I've already mowed once. I've gotten the question of how do you mow around them? You don't, you go right over top of them with the mower. Once they settle in, the mower will just go over and maintain your flagstone pass if you do it this way. You don't have to mow around them. Uh, you do have to do some weed whacking to keep the grass from growing on them or eventually you won't see them anymore because the grass will just go right over top of them. So maybe every couple weeks I weed whack all the edges and back off all the grass. You can also go around and every once in a while and take a shovel, these flat shovels. These are the only tools you need. This is the best tool because you just want to take off that top layer of sod, but because that requires pure arm strength and that's something that it kills my neck so a lot of times you'll see me use the sharper sh shovel to do it okay so we'll get started if there's a cat present first thing you'll need to do is to remove the cat <laughs> gently <laughs> You see that if you just let kind of the rock do its job, now you have your entire outline. So it's worth being patient. Just lay them down and then you have your entire outline of where you, you need to cut it out. It doesn't look like heavy sod here, so I may be able to do it with this shovel. Yeah, I will be able to. And then you just get under it and start removing your sod. This is a good trick if you have a bad neck to use your feet as opposed to my husband just takes his arms and just goes straight down the line. He's got that strength, but if I do that, I can't move my neck the next day. So this works out the best for me. Okay, at this point, once you get the sod all out, you kind of want to determine the thickness of your rock and how much you really want it to go down. Uh, we have found you don't want to dig them in too far because you end up with kind of holes in the ground. So you kind of want to, and we try to disturb the soil as little as possible because you want that nice compacted soil underneath them so they don't keep continuing. That doesn't mean you can't use some soil or sand to level them if you want them level. Um, this is a really fairly level area and it's actually graded really well that it runs into the gardens just just as it is so the water so it's going to work great for us so we don't have to do a whole lot of leveling here for this path but if you did you can use sand now at this point you can dig but just like i said think about that before you dig them in too far because the further in they are the more water they accumulate and the more grass grows over top of them 
so um, but you do need them in enough that you can run your mower over top of them Now this side is good and this side, side is higher. So what I'm probably going to do is flip the rock the other way to get this side in a little bit deeper. Okay, so we're going to see what this looks like and flip it back in. You want to flip them as little as possible to make it as easy on yourself to do it. You can walk on them and see if any parts are on level. This is really, really actually worked out great. Pretty level. So the next thing I do is I take some of the dirt that I just took out Put it back around it. And eventually the grass is just going to grow right in there. So that's it. That's all we do. This is what you're really going to look like when you get done doing this project. So don't do it before church or going after breakfast because you're going to look like a garden troll when you get done. Um, this is a great time after you get everything situated and in to do a great raking around. It'll thatch and get all the dead out of the surrounding grass that you have left. And then you can either just let the grass fill in because it will, or like us, we're gonna do a reseed next month in um, September. And we just do an overseeding. And um, just to kind of keep the weeds at bay, give them less room for next year. And yeah, so I'm gonna get a blower, I'm gonna blow it off, and then clean them all off with the, the hose and um, this project should be done. Yay! Okay, so this project is finished except for the seeding next month um, which by then it may have already grown back in the grass is you can see after it's watered it's not as tragic as it looks when you're doing it 
I'm doing it this method. This grass will be, you, you won't even know we were here in three weeks. Um, we'll fill in and, um, and now it's comfortable to walk on. The mower will go over it, no problem. You saw the, that heavy wheelbarrow. I could barely move that wheelbarrow, it was so heavy. Um, went over it without any problem. I think it hitched on a rock once. So it all in all turned out really great. And um, yeah, so I'll show you a couple of our other flagstone paths and let you know how we might've done some things um, differently. Okay, so this is a path we did do in a different way. We used to have it in the grass when there was grass here and it led just up there. We didn't have this section over here, but when we did the Potage kitchen garden, we decided to lift this path so that it wouldn't flood. And a down here, underneath these two stones, was a two and a half foot deep French drain pot put here. And then if you see, the path is actually humped in the center. It goes kind of up and down. Not, not huge, it's comfortable to walk on, but it's definitely graded so that the center is higher than the sides. And that allows the water to run off into the beds where it can be captured by the plants. So under here is, is um, landscape fabric. So we have landscape fabric under here and just under this front piece along here to keep the weeds down. And I know that a lot of people say, oh, there's no reason to use landscape fabric. In this case, the fabric and in the kitchen garden has worked out great. We're not losing a ton of stone like we do in our driveway. And also we barely ever have to weed it. It's, it's really um, keeps the weeds at bay. And when the weeds do pop up, we're able to just quickly hand pull them and it's not a problem. They don't deep root into that um, fabric. You do have to stay on top of it because obviously they can root right through it if you let them go long enough. So yes, yeah, so this was put over top of landscape fabric and then the stones were put on top of that to cover the fabric. Uh, it really, I don't think it's ever shown. Um, we put a pretty deep bed of stone on top of it so we don't have a problem with the fabric showing through or anything like that. This path was completely dug out side to side and straight down it. Um, we kind of did it slowly. I believe there is a makeover video for this garden. And um, there is no underlayment. There's no a landscape fabric underneath it. And I'm very sorry about that because we lose a lot of stone, the stone gets dirtier. And as you can see, we also have a lot more weed in it. If you're gonna do a path like this, my experience has been that the landscape fabric definitely works great, but otherwise love it. And it is a little extra work, but it's worth it. It looks great and you know, live and learn. This path is, has been here at least 18 years, if not longer. And again, we just maintain it by riding over it with the mower and then again with the weed whacker. And this is um, our round bed, of course. And so we have a flagstone path that goes all the way around it and it's pretty wide. This one was also done using landscape fabric underneath. I put the landscape fabric just right on top of the sod that was already existing. I didn't dig it out. I've learned not to drop our property any more than it is because then we get flooding issues. So having taken out that sod, we would have had to bring in a lot of soil. There's no reason to touch the sod. Just let the topsoil remain as is. I put the landscape fabric down, put the stones around it. I probably moved 90% of these stones myself. 
um, the very, very largest stones. These are really thick and wide. These are probably some of the heaviest stone we had ever gotten for this and the side garden path. It's just what was available at the time. And we, I laid these down right on top of the landscape fabric and then added the mulch around it. This bed is really easy to maintain. I think I might hand weed it three times during the growing season and that's it. And I haven't done it over the last month. And as you can see, it's pretty much weed free. Okay, so that's pretty much the last I'm gonna show you. Thanks for joining me. And I hope you got some tips on how to, how to do the flagstones and I answered some of your questions. Oh, someone had asked me what type of stone we use. These are primarily Pennsylvania field stone or flagstone, the blue stone. So that's pretty much what we get. We're in Southern New Jersey, so pretty much most of it comes through Pennsylvania, quarries. All right, so thanks for joining me and I hope you have a great day.